one sleep to go. It's so close you can taste it on the 360 agenda. Bona fide selection shocks. There's so much to discuss from the first set of teams picked. What lies in store for the Gold Coast Suns? We'll ask Guy McKenna what's fair expectation in season four. And the game by game breakdown from Baz and Cam, plus a special guest for the weekend forecast, Sandy Roberts, to join us at the desk. I'm Jared Waitley, he's Mark Robinson. This Thursday night, it's footy from all angles. Now, Robbo, tell me honestly, yep. how many hours have you spent in the crafting of your super coach team? This week? <laughs> oh, it's been open on my computer every day. Okay. Every day. And I'll say, that's it. And then I'll go back 10 minutes later. We've been talking about it in the office. Seriously, everyone's been picking their team all week. Okay. It's panic stations for those of us who have opened it up this morning and still got a blank field. Oh, haven't you done yours yet? So this is a cra- it's very self-serving here. I won't be alone. We're having a quick crash course in the six key issues which have to be answered tonight so, the key, so that we the can key, put a team key, in. So the key person's coming in? Jay Clark is going to come in oh, from your office. Oh, Jay. Oh, I thought we were going to get the key person to come in. <laughs> nah, Jay's the guru, mate. As we all know, he was on the Supercoach show last year. He is the man. So all yeah, it's purely selfish. I'm here to pick your brain no, and Jay's but, brain and try to come up with a team. You've got to pick your own team, I know, mate, I know. Pal. But come there'll on. be people who have uh, issues. Yeah, no doubt. Everyone's got issues with Supercoach. What are you looking forward to, Robbo? You no, know, I'm looking forward to, Jared. Tell me. I'm looking forward to going to the footy. Yeah. And not just going to watch the game... I'm looking forward to deciding to go to the game and then walking to the game or driving or catching, I don't catch trains. Just thinking, what's going to happen today? You know, Friday night, Fremantle, Collingwood. I mean, what? It's a really, really great game to start. I just want to go and see crazy people do crazy things (laughs) on and off the field. I think one of the more enjoyable things I do when I go to the footy is what I'm working is look down at the crowd when there's been a really big moment or the siren or a big goal in the last quarter and you look at these people and their ages from 5 to 80 and they're just going berserk and I can't think of anything else in life where people do that en masse. Can you? I, I, I can't. Not in my life anyway. It's just amazing football. Nice. Well, what do you love? So on my What lap, do you love? What are you looking forward today, to? I've written don't overreact to round one. Right. But there's so many tales to tell on Sunday night's game. I cannot mm. wait for mm. Carlton and Port Adelaide. Who's your tip? If there's... I'm strongly with the power. Strongly. Mm. But this is where all theories go on. The funniest part about this week is the predictions that everyone is forced to make. Everywhere you go, you pick up a shard of a conversation yep. on this to beat this, this... And the amount of offence people take to your tip, to your opinion. Oh, no. on. It's so crazy. It's worth nothing until they go out there yeah. and then you have a look and go, oh, I've got that completely wrong. Yeah. Well, I don't feel quite bad about that at all. I cannot wait to see Port Adelaide again. And I think it's the perfect start-off match because I don't know with either of these two teams, are they going up or are yeah, they going down? Yeah. I don't know. But I suspect what we see on Sunday night will actually provide a chunk of the answer as opposed to being the anomaly that round one can sometimes provide. I think it will be believable what happens on Sunday night. Don't overreact. Don't overreact to Don't round overreact. one. Write it down. No, no, no. <laughs> and then rip it up. I've actually written, completely ignore it. I've actually written tomorrow in the paper, God, a win and a loss on round one. A loss just fuels all the doubt you had mm-hmm. all summer. Are you good enough? And a win means, oh, I think we can play finals. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what happens in the result of one game of football. It is. All Crazy right, top job. of the agenda, and this is very much pure football. Selection, especially at Collingwood, was going to tell a key tale. And it's telling an unexpected tale. This was how we all felt last night and this morning, because Collingwood had seemed to show their hand. Ben Hudson was coming in. And then the team sheets mm. have landed... And the ruck has been entrusted to Grundy and Wits. And it's not entrusted to Big Ben. So have a look at how this has landed. And, of course, these are not pure ins and outs, but those who are playing, Grundy, Wits, Adams, Frost is at centre-half back in the team that's been named. Tuvi's back, Langdon. Well done, Tuvi. Great to have him back. Hudson's not there. Lynch is an emergency. White and Reed are injured. Keefe's an emergency. And Fasolo's not quite ready. That is a serious tale. Yeah, I know. (laughs) I thought Hudson was going to play. We were hinting towards that last night in our discussion. Keith surprises me. He played 
key back last year, which allowed Ben Reid to go forward. He hasn't had a great nab challenge. He hasn't had one. So, obviously not ready. Really ballsy by um, Nathan Buckley. It is. Is his name Jack Frost? Yep. What's his name? Yeah. It is Jack it is. Frost. Yep. You're in, and you're playing centre-half back. We discussed it before, and you might play on Pav. This is your first game of footy. Really good coaching. Bold coaching. Bold. Yeah, yeah that's what bold. coaches do. Throw young people in. Different to Morabito. He needs yep. his confidence. Yep. Young fella, mate, we've got faith in you. You're going in. I think it's fantastic by Nathan Buckley. Mm. All right, well, let's have a broader take on what's happened at selection with those who aren't there first because there are a few tales here as well and uh, one especially unexpected one, I reckon, from the Sydney Swans. Ryan O'Keefe, yeah. get a Guernsey. I wish they could put the reason down mm. so we don't speculate. He's an emergency. Anyway, so he's... Well, he's I on. saw him play in the intra club up there, OK, and I commented, I actually wrote it, I think. I, I, I hope I wrote it. I said, I can't remember seeing Ryan O'Keefe fitter than what I've seen him. I mean, he's probably in his 15th season now, but he, he's just a manic trainer. He looks after himself. I looked at him, I thought, God, you're fit. To see the team come through tonight, Jared, I thought, wow, they can't fit Ryan O'Keefe. Mm -hmm. So no Jardin Carazzo, as was forecast. Yep. Uh, Schultz is in, yeah, actually. Schultz is, Schultz is on the wrong list there. Sylvia, Clark and Pierce, the, the emergencies, yep. which we chatted about last night. King, not ready for the Tigers. Carmichael Hunt, uh, Boyd. So they haven't gone the big three yet, no. the Giants. Boyd, they'll keep their powder dry and the other two are in. So those who have made it into the selected teams this weekend. And um, we'll roll those up. I can't do much until Question they without roll notice. <laughs> Question without notice. <laughs> there they are. Here they come. So, Franklin, uh -huh. Laidler's come in. I think Laidler will be a permanent for the Swans. Do That's you just really? opinion, though. There you go. Super, super coach. Yeah, he's in mind. Super mine. coaching. Uh, Cameron and Patton. So, Cameron came through with the ankle injury. Yep. Mumford obviously makes his debut there. Matt They're Thomas big names, aren't they? And we've never said that. Very rarely have we said that before for GWS. Yep. Cameron, Patton, Mumford, big names. This team's starting to get exciting. Yep, Thomas and Everett have both made it through for the Blues. Everett's uh, on the interchange from. Yep, Clarion Pollock, which is good. And Lemons and Martin, there's going to be three debutants for the Suns, which we'll talk to no, Guy McKenna Cleary's about that in, shortly. Clearly, in a super coach. Keep Cleary, he's got to go in. OK, yourself. so Daisy Thomas, he's going yep. to be part of it first up, and that will cheer the hearts of Blues fans. He sat down with David King ahead of Sunday night's broadcast. Look, the, the decision wasn't an easy one. Obviously, um, you know, I weighed up a lot of factors. Um, you know, I did the best to try and get back last year and play some finals footy for Collingwood and, and show them you know, that I still had it and was confident in the ankle. and. Um, but, you know, when that didn't quite go to plan, that's kind of when things got thrown up in the air a little bit more. So they were unsure of, you know, where I was and how, you know, how many years I should stay there for. And so in that regard, it became quite difficult. And you know, it was one that I was um, confident in making. And now that I'm here, I'm, uh, you know, certainly enjoying it. So the, that full interview will be seen in the pre-match on Sunday night here on Fox Footy. Um, there are questions inside and outside. There are questions in players' own minds. And you've heard... Daisy Thomas contemplate them there as he's mm. waiting for his return to football and what will it look like for him at Carlton. It's one thing to practice, but mm. this is where it gets very real. Uh, I, hope, I hope Dale Thomas gets back to being that manic footballer that he was. he was. He was so fit, he was so lean, he was so hungry. He would be thrown behind the ball deep by Mick Malthouse as a very steadier late in quarters. He used to run up and down the wings. You've called, you've called the games, mate. He would run up and down the wings to the point of exhaustion. He would come off the ground. I know a lot of players do, but not many players did the, the gut-busting, sprinting running that Dale Thomas did when he was hungry, when he wanted to be the best. Of course, we haven't seen Thomas at his best for 14 months, 15 mm -hmm. months. You look at him and say, have you still got it? Have you still got that burning desire? And I'm looking forward to seeing that because if he has, he will help Carlton significantly. Okay. I've got three questions heading towards round one. For me? The first relates to Lance Franklin. So let's yep. hear from his teammate first, Ted Richards. I, I, I've spoken to him about it. He, you know, he was for a NAB Cup game. I think, you know, I think there was some, some nerves there for him. And um, getting off... Getting off to you know a new team, he wants to get off to a good start, and um, 
Um, I, it's it's really good to see that no matter how long he's played, he, he he's still got that you know those butterflies and wanting to start the year on a good note. So Buddy's nervy. My first question though, Robo, is yes. where's Buddy? Today was the promotion of the Sydney Derby, the Battle of the Bridge. Huge start to the season potentially in New South Wales. This is the poster boy for the code. Yep. And in Should the lineup, up. he's not there. Demetrio flew up from Melbourne for the press conference. He made a boo-boo himself and said this could get as big as Manchester City versus Manchester United, but we'll let that one go. But Lance Franklin is the biggest name in AFL in Sydney right now. They're having a massive press conference to promote the game. I think that Lance Franklin should have been at that press conference mm. because Lance Franklin might be on the front pages of newspapers tomorrow. Well, if Franklin and Cameron were there together, I mean, that's Fantastic. the promotion the game's looking for. Is exactly, it not? exactly. I would think the AFL would be disappointed with Sydney for that. It will mean nothing probably when he walks out and kicks eight and really turns it on on the fields. Uh, my second question for you, Robbo, relates to Port Adelaide. Yep. And the proposition is can the power strike twice? This is Ken Hinckley today. I think it's a better team than your finals team from last year. Oh, I know. Who knows? I mean, really, it's it performance will count the most, and I think we performed pretty well at the end of last year. But that's it's a long time ago now. It's uh, things do change a lot in in six months, and albeit it's been pre-season, that players improve, players can slip up a little, players can have injuries. There's so much different things that can be different. So we're we're as well prepared as we were, no doubt about that. We're probably a little bit better prepared if if, that, if I'm being totally honest as far as. We understand a lot more about what we're trying to do and we've tried to improve areas of our game over the summer where we haven't had to play week in, week out. Can you go on a Cinderella run twice? Yeah, of course you can. Of course you can. We saw with their youth last year how, how quickly they adapted to the message from Ken Inkley and how quickly they all fitted in to the team mentality, which is really more important because you know, Ken, Ken is pretty clear and concise of what he says. He, he doesn't... He's not. I, he's even said it. He's not a coach who, who's trying to rethink the game. He's a just straight down the line. His kids really played a fanatical brand of football, and they're only kids, so well, they'll be bigger and they'll be stronger, as he said. Then I think you know what? And they also play exciting football. Mm. One of the joys of footy last year was because in previous years Port Adelaide were playing at Amy Stadium. You might not even watch it. But you know why? Because they were a rabble. They didn't play exciting football. Last year, Sunday afternoon, Port Adelaide over there. Oh, bang. Yep. 504. So Let's go and have a look yeah. at these boys play. They'll be better. It's just what will that mean in the construct of the season? Who else is going to be better? That's right. The third proposition is are the Suns now to be feared? And whether you like this as mind games or deflection or whatever, Damien Hardwick, whose Tigers take the task for the first time heading to the Gold Coast, he thinks yes. Yeah, I think the danger with, with looking too much at Gary is you, you underestimate the other players in the side. Like, Presti is an outstanding player. Mir is going to be a star. You know, uh, Richard Talley is another quality on ball, or as you've got Bunnell. So you can manage to uh, try and put your all the eggs in one basket with Gary, or you can actually realise that their midfield overall is a very solid unit that, that is capable of winning some footy games. Well, I think this question should just immediately go to the Gold Coast coach, don't you? Is he on the line? He is. Let's talk Guy to him. McKenna is with us. Welcome to AFL 360, Guy. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, give us a, just an opening statement, Guy, and what is it fair to expect from the Suns in this fourth season? Well, yeah, after four seasons, um, you know, we, we have played 46, 44 and 42 players in the first three seasons so although we're going into our fourth year there's certainly a lot of pl players I think of Nathan Bock that's only played 25 games probably Michael Riscatelli's struggled through half of his games with a, a tendonitis in the hamstring um, our three key forwards if you like have only played well they've played 40 odd games but I would think um, that maturation if you like but probably more what we're, we're hoping to see this season is uh, a continuity and some chemistry amongst our tall forwards our midfields then supplying that ball into our forward line uh, our key defenders of course playing a lot of football together and actually just trying to settle the side down I think as I said I think physically we've grown our, our great test will always be our 
our mental maturation and of course with Gary as, as captain and Michael Riscatelli coming back from some injury um, and Nathan Box probably at round three or four we start to get some senior players out there and actually guide these younger players through I think that's when you're going to see a, a massive spike again for the Gold Coast Suns. So you've preached patience from the outset and we've been acolytes to that is it time now to turn towards judgment or is that going to have to wait 12 more months? Oh no! Look, we're we're up for the challenge. We're not shying away from that. We understand. We got uh, we won eight games last season. We knocked over two probably legitimate top eight sides. Probably they were at that stage. And in Collingwood and, and North Melbourne at home, mind you, our draw was a tad softer. We came away with eight wins. Now we have to go from eight wins to twelve wins. That's a fifty percent jump. So we're under no illusions how tough that's going to be. But we're certainly looking forward to that challenge. As I said, we've had a really good solid pre-season. It's it's been ramped up again by Stephen Swert. Uh, our midfield's really really solid. They've had a really good pre-season. We're a bit light on as our our key uh, forwards and our key defenders are going. So they'll, they'll, they'll go into the season, rum, uh, rumbling into the season. If they won't be very smooth, if you like, but they're up. They're up for the challenge. I mean, that's that's the thing. The excitement, or and we saw that at our main training session during the week. I mean, it was like herding cats on on Wednesday night. So uh, Wednesday training. So um, yeah, there'll be a few nerves again. But we certainly need to make sure that every side that comes to Metricon Stadium lo- leaves battered and bruised. See, that's the best thing I reckon I've heard you say, Bluey, about the battered and bruised. Because you had the boys, but now they're men, and you've got to turn your you've got to turn your footy ground into a fortress. So. Do you say to your players, you know what, guys, they're, they're actually very scared of us here. Do you, do you try and motivate them that way by saying they don't want to come here because this is our place? Yeah, well, yeah, this, uh, you can say it now, Robbo, with a bit more um, an understanding. You've got the artillery to, to back that yep. up. You know, Charlie Dixon's played 40-odd games. Uh, you know, Tommy Lynch is uh, almost a man mountain now, but again, only 40-odd games. Sam Day's put some size on over the break and all those type of things. So you can say it. And I've, we've been saying it, you know, sort of lightly, if you like, for the first three yep. years, and you, you sort of don't have a lot to back it up with. But now, yeah, these blokes have grown now, fourth year, all those type of things, and you can start to back that up. But clearly, what you want to do too, having been a, um, a West Coast player, you just don't want to live at home and just, you know, your Tarzan at home yep. and then Jane away. So uh, we've got to make sure that we turn up to play everywhere we go, and, and probably we've been able to do that because we've been scrounging wins wherever we go, if you like. So, um, but yeah, we certainly need to make Metricon because it is tend to be a bit more humid, a bit hotter than it is in Melbourne early in the season, late in the season. We've got to, certainly got to make it our home and, and a feared place to come uh, for any other side that wants to try and take four points off us. Well, you're playing for keeps and they're probably going to throw um, uh, Matty Thomas, I think, at, uh, at Gaz. Are you expecting that, Bluey? Yeah, though, that's certainly been spoken up that way. But, yeah, there's... Yeah, you just marvel at Gary. He's just a competitor. He wants to be the best. He wants to be the best still in our group, which is fantastic. It drives him to be as good as he was last season, or it's going to drive him again to be even better this season. But it also drives our other mids, you know, Jago O'Meara, Michael Riscatelli coming back from injury, Dion Prestia, um, you know, the, the sort of Jack Martin coming into his first season, Matt Shaw. I mean, the list goes on. So it's really healthy up here, and we're looking forward to the start of the season. But well, we're playing for keeps, Bluey, and yeah, as I said before, the the boys are now men and they're going to go after Gaz you know that's what that's what they do everyone goes after him are we going to see a more physical Gold Coast Suns you played in the West Coast team you had some animals in the premiership teams have you got got enough you know lost Campbell Brown so have you got enough to say right everyone we're going to stand up to you well, I think that's uh, out of that disappointing incident. I think that's the positive, and that's certainly the positive I'm looking forward to. I mean, Charlie Dixon now is ready to throw his weight around. Tommy Lynch down forward. Um, David Swallow, he's just a combative footballer. I mean, Jago Mirren, who's second year, he doesn't look like a second year player to me. And, you know, there's a lot of other players sprinkled throughout the group that are ready to stand up and, and pick up that slack. And, and yeah, I mean, we, we have to do, be able to do that at home. Uh, and we also have to do it away when we're playing oppositions in their home ground as well. Guy, have you agreed to the one-year contract extension to take you to the end of five years? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not signed, sealed and locked away yet, Jared. but uh, yeah, all but I'm very comfortable where it's at. The club is too, and there'll certainly be uh, something said, I think, publicly in the next uh, few days, that's for sure. Why do you think the timing is right for that? Uh, 
Well, I, I, well, I'm looking forward to it as well. I mean, just to get this year, when I say out of the way, but we have to go through the process we want to go. And, and as I said, this year could be could be very exciting for the Gold Coast Suns, of which I want to be a part of. And and then obviously then looking into 2015. And if you look closely at our list, uh, we're still ranked, you know, 17th in age, 17th in games played, all that sort of stuff. But just next year, all of a sudden, that's a year well, I think we legitimately can say, hey, we're year 12s now, we're playing against the year 12s. This year still year 11s, maybe half a year 11, half a year 12. Um, so this year, as I said, will be an exciting year for the Suns. I expect still improvement in the, in the, in the side. Um, some, a lot more wins, of course, uh, to give ourselves a chance of playing in finals football, being able to compete for longer, for a full 120 20 minutes and that's going to be exciting uh, but for, for the for the the year next year of course um, to get that locked away that's that's I think where again legitimately we can actually start starting to push around a few sides which would be really exciting for the boys and the, the club itself yeah I think there's a lot of excitement around having a look in on Saturday night so good luck with it and good luck with the whole year thanks gents Guy McKenna with us on AFL 360, the Suns against the Tigers. Talking tough, I like it. Yeah, yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, really it's good. good. OK, Robo, well, yeah. tonight it's been reported, and you can treat this as fact, that Asada has issued Stephen Dank with the show cause notice relating to uh, more than 30 um, questions, incidental um, procedures... Um, short of an infraction notice, but seeking answers. So where they didn't use their coercive powers to interview him, they have begun formal action now against Dank. So just very quickly, to show cause, it, my understanding is he's got 10 days to respond with um, an explanation as to why he should not get infraction notices. Is that how it, yes, it's done? So he'll write that. Now, if Stephen Dank is true to his word, Jared, Stephen Dank will be responding with a letter from his lawyer saying, well, I'm taking immediate legal action against Asada, AFL, whoever else Stephen Dank wants to take legal action because he has said it many, many times and now the time's come. The question of the night is, do the instances in the show cause relate to Cronulla or to Essendon? Um, no, I'm not, a, I'm not aware, Jared. I'm not aware. I, I've been told, but I can't confirm it, so I'm not, I'm not going to go with it. I would it's obviously hugely significant if this relates to the procedures at Essendon. If this, if these thirty-four, what are they? What are they? What are they? Incidents, procedures. If they all relate to Essendon, this could be the damn wall busting. This story, you know, it's, we're one day away from the start of the season, and Asada issues it today, and now. This could play a significant role this year. 38, if they are against Essendon, 38, how are the players feeling tonight? Yes, so the feeling is, well, in fact, the Herald Sun has just posted that they believe it relates only to Essendon only. and not to his time at Cronulla. So that's just gone up? Yes. So, 38 procedures at Essendon, he's been called 34, 34, 34. to explain. To clarify. To show cause as to why they're not breaches under anti-doping. I'll ask you again, how do you think the players are feeling right now? 34. You'd want to know a bit more about what it all means, I would think. Good luck, Bomber. OK. Um, fight night, Thursday night, with a real edge to it as we look ahead to these first four matches and look for the clues and the insights. Cameron Mooney and Barry Hall to take us through them next. I think the start, the Q1 will haunt us for, for a while and the missed opportunities will hurt us, but it's a great lesson for our club that it is about the basics under pressure. It's drop marks, missed targets, missed tackles, missed shots. At the end of the day, separate quality. It is all or nothing. And right now, the all is with the brown and gold and Fremantle have got nothing, nothing. Can't wear your heart in your sleeve, but with this... Personally, I'm disappointed, but I'm disappointed for the club and the players more so. Um, I understand how hard it is to get back. How hard?
hard it is to get back. That is the quest that Fremantle begins tomorrow night. Cameron Mooney, Barry yeah. Hall, welcome. Hi, boys. Thank you. You oh, both know this journey. You both lived through it. One team did make it back. After you lost, one team didn't make it back. So do you have strong empathy? Can you recall what it would be like for these Fremantle players as they count down to this first game? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's, uh, it's tough going over through the whole summer, isn't it, Baz, when you know you've either lost or, in my case, you've you put a lot of the blame on yourself. So you, in a way, you can't wait to get back out there. Then another way, you're thinking... God, if I go out and play and get in another final series and, and play, play poorly oh. again, oh, it just starts to weigh on you. You're a stress head, weren't you? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. oh, no, I wasn't too bad. Oh, yeah. It was just small because I, I blamed myself so much for a loss. You beat yourself up too much, mate. Yeah, that's, every that's year. Pretty. Yeah, every year. I don't year need more, do, don't you? No, no, I'm fine now. <laughs> but, uh, you sure? <laughs> 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 but you do over the whole summer don't you Baz yeah. you just sit there and go what I could have done and it goes through your mind and, and we spoke about Ballantyne earlier mm. you know we talk about Nate Fife this is a guy that I don't think it would bother I reckon it will drive him he'll become, he'll become a superstar mm. Ballantyne I'm just not worried but it'll be just interesting to see how he handled the summer yeah. and what he's going to do yeah you do it, it burns out your all summer but one thing it does you obviously want to get back there and, and try and redeem yourself yeah. but one thing it does is the, the fearful part of it's gone because you've been there and you've you've been to the bottom of the barrel in terms of you've lost a grand final is probably not much worse a feeling. Absolutely. Now when you're having a shot at goal, um, there's there's not so much um, fear of failure. And that, that's why people get nervous and choke up and freeze. Um, those shots of goal, if they had their chance again, hopefully they do, yeah. um, I reckon they'll be much better for it. I, yeah. I just think that the pressure won't be there as much. They've been there, they've done that. The fear of failure is they've, they've been there before, they've experienced it, mm. so it, it won't be as great. So I, I think if they do get a chance, um, not many people get get back another chance to do it, but if they do, I reckon they'll be much, much better for it. So it's a, obviously a very stern test of character, Cam, and that's why you, you've sort of zeroed in on Ballantyne. How yeah. will he respond, not only in the short term, but over the period of a, a whole season? Probably the whole season. I mean, he copped a lot of flack, and, mm. and that's what happens when you, when you play poorly, and, and you're somebody that irritates the public. You know, they're just waiting for an excuse to belt mm. you and, and he gave them a big excuse. Uh, so yeah, that's what I said. It would be interesting to see how he goes. Look, I, I love the way he plays. I'd love him as a teammate. I hated playing against him. He wanted to knock his head off. Yeah, but but yeah. as a teammate, he would be fantastic. You know what he does really well? He works his butt off. He's one of the best small forwards yeah, in the game. So Ross Lionel, all Ross has to say to him, hey, just keep working. Mm. It'll, it'll come to you. You'll get your rewards. Keep working. So I'm actually expecting Ballantyne, if he can, to come out even fiercer, you know, a, a small forward, you know, just going for the ball. I think it'll drive him as well. I know. The, the one thing Bomber said to me at the start of 09, well, so we were having a stretch and he came over and just, him and I, and he just said, I know you still blame yourself, but no one else does. And that all of a sudden just took a lot of relief as well. So it'll be interesting to see what Rossi Lyons said to him a little bit. Over the, over the summer and, and going into this week. Do you, do you think it'll change him as a footballer? We, we know he gets um, into players and irritates them. Do, do you reckon it'll change him? Because the ammunition back now is yeah, that, that, yeah. Big, that big's pretty deep. I, yeah, it does. I think it could. Do you reckon? I, I, I reckon it, it might. Could. There's nothing worse when people tell you, geez, you had a bad round. You cost the side. That's a pretty is hard he, thing to take for an opposition side. It, we can work out. Yeah. yeah, that would be hard. Did anyone do that to you? Yeah, that's when I was crying most <laughs> of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Oh, you, you, you cop it every now and then, but it was more from the crowd. Did you well. ever look at a player and say, really, you're saying that to me, you? Oh, Maybe. you'd always come back with something. Would you? But uh, I won't repeat it. Fist, fist. <laughs> uh, Collingwood's team, which is a source of great fascination now, Grundy and Wits are the two Ruckman and Frost is the centre half back. It's it's the road less travelled in a way. And Nathan Buckley boldly picking Jeez, a side. Didn't Baz put the moz on Jesse White? Oh, going to be the next big what? thing at Collingwood. Now he's injured. This is going to be the next Peter Moore. <laughs> 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 hey, well, how significant is this, guys? I mean, they're probably going. They were going to start Reed and White forward. I mean, they have a restructured forward group. I had the I had Collingwood actually winning this game until these two. Went down. I don't think they can win now. I can't see where else they're going to get their goals from. We're talking about a very good defence, a very good back line. Now you've got your two other key forwards out. 
puts so much more pressure on Cloak now. Oh, it does it what? Yeah. Yeah, look, it's it's, it's a big outlook. And I spoke about Jesse White and his importance in the preseason, how well he's been going. That's that's a big loss for him. And and Reed, we we know how good a swingman he is from from back to forty. Plugs holes for him. So them two guys alone, and we see Hudson there. He got elevated. It's it's amazing he got elevated, but didn't play. Didn't play. Yeah. yeah, he might be a late one. Can, yeah. I, can I ask you with the press and going with three tall forwards? Is it wise to, you know, the strategy is let's get the tools down there and kick it long and kick it high and get it down there. So does this change the game style in any way, taking away those two tools? Or will uh, Wits go in and fill that spot and they'll still play the same way? Look, I think they'll, uh, well, obviously, I think they'll go small now. And I think they will now bring everybody up and try and get them over the back. So it's changing the game, changing the change, game yeah, plan. Yeah, I think they'll have to change the game plan around now. But they probably would have done that anyway with White because he's such, such an athletic player. Mm-hmm. But now they're going to have to go a small forward line and just really open up their forward line and just try and beat them on the way back. The set of players who have waited to line up for their new clubs. We spoke with Heath Shaw about it last night. Uh, Lance Franklin is clearly the most prominent. What would Buddy want out of Saturday to calm, as his teammates said, the nerves that he's feeling? Yeah, look, he's going to be anxious. I was a bit concerned with with, uh, his NAB challenge form and and how he's reacting. Mm -hmm. He was very, very frustrated. Um, being the biggest name in the game and, and going on the, the contract we all know about, um, I think that affected him a bit. He wanted to go out and start because there's been so much talk about him. I, I think he just needs to release the shackles a bit and just play. He's going to kick two or three on a bad game. He's going to be valued. Someone's got, yeah. to, te- someone's got to pick him up regardless. So he's going to be valued just running out there. But he looked very frustrated to me. And I, th- I think that... Maybe the pressure, he maybe wanted to dominate. And, of and course just, he did. Yeah, Can and you just, remember just show your... the Sydney Swans fans and the players yes. that he's there. Yep. Um, it's, it's not always going to happen that way. So I, I hope his expectations aren't as high as what they were in this game because he looked very frustrated to me. Mm, he did the swinging arm of Buddy. We've come to see it a bit more in football these days. He doesn't need to do that. He's, no, he's a he good doesn't. player. He's value just being out there. So, as I said, a bad game for Buddy Franklin. He kicks were, two or three. Were you nervous? You'd be galoot when you ran out for Sydney. Well, for the same reasons. Game? I was, you know, probably the the big recruit at that stage that year. I want to impress everyone. You know, you got me here for a good reason. I want to show you why you got me here. You were That's probably what he's feeling. around the forward line saying, oh, I'm big, bad, bad. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get reported? No. Say no. That year? No, that game. No. Thank God no. for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Did it go all right? Can you remember? Uh, yeah, I did, yeah. How many? Yeah. Oh, I kicked through a four, but we won the game. So it was, That's um, the main thing. But, but Rodney was great in terms of um, we, we, the expectations mm-hmm. we want. It's not about goals, so he sort of released the shackles even before I started. Do you know what you do? What you do though, as a, as a playing group, when a, when a new guy comes in, especially as a forward or a key forward, full forward, you just say to the midfield group, you say to the small forwards, your first touch, you look for him, yeah, and you try and get him on the board early, yeah, get him a mark yeah, early, get him a shot on goal. Hopefully, he kicks it, and once he does that. Everything will be gone. Yeah. It'll be fine. What about the player who's putting his own body back on trial? And this is Dale Thomas, who um, we don't know from the mm. outside, and maybe he's still learning from the inside what he's still capable of. Look, I thought he looked pretty good when he first came back, mm. Daisy. And I think uh, I think he'd be a fantastic recruit for him. I think his ankle will be okay from from all reports. He's gonna. Oh, I think he's a star. Oh, he, he really is. is. He you is. Know, two years ago, I think Rossi Lyon said he was the best player in the game, or well, most influential. Look at that. Yeah. You know, his defensive stuff was incredible, and we know Rossi loves that, so maybe that's why he said it. But he wasn't far off it. He really is a superstar player, and I can see him just having a really good year for them. And I, th- I, was, I think he would just sell straight in. Yeah. I was about to say, when Daisy Thomas was at his best is when he was tackling and putting on pressure. Yeah. And his work rate, you spoke about earlier, it's probably the only time I'm ever going to agree with you, but <laughs> his work rate was phenomenal. <laughs> and was. Way, he was one yeah. of the best tacklers in the game. Yep. So if you can hinge your game off that... Your pressure stuff, he's talented. All the other stuff will happen. Uh, he'll be in a good spot. Carlton has an anniversary jumper for the 150th year. This is a bit old school. I don't mind this. Is it, it will look similar, but you'll be able to see it's um, what, what sewn on on the front instead oh, of just it? printed the insignia, which is uh, this nice. This is Mark Murphy's jumper. And on the back, they've got uh, the Carlton Premierships. There we go, the Premiership Cups from down the years as part of that. So um, we have to return that because Mark's got to wear that like in Robert? action. Yeah, you know, I like Carl. I like, I like they're, they're celebrating 150 yeah, years. Feel that? That's yeah. old school. And, and it's. I like that. Do you want to feel? Tough guy? <laughs> the, the jumper? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just lovely. Um, oh, there you go. <laughs> Port Adelaide. <Bruce. laughs> like Carl. What, what, what are you expecting from them? It's, it's funny, they've Port. had the. 
Um, they took everybody with them on a journey, but mm -hmm. there's no expectation again. M most don't think they'll repeat the deeds of making the finals. Uh, I've actually got them sneaking into the eight again. I, I'm, I'm a huge rap report, and probably because I'm good mates with Kenny and he had such an influence on my career, but I can see the influence he's having on these mm -hmm. guys, and it's such a positive one. And I think they're arguably the fastest team in the AFL. They're getting more and more skillful as, as we go on. Uh, their back line's pretty settled. Their midfield is as good as any young midfield in the competition. And then, you know, we saw Westoff only, what, two weeks ago kick five goals. So he's in good form. Schultz is a really good player. Look, I, I, I really like them. And I think they're going to finish again in the eight. Mm. So I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how they're going. But again, I, I'm just really boyish about them. We've spoken a lot about the Suns with Guy McKenna. What about the Tigers? How important is it to get that win on the road to start with? Yeah, it's massive. <laughs> it's it's a big game. It's a massive game, this. And I, I think the, the Tigers have been been up and down in the, the NAB Challenge. So, uh, look, they'll, they'll be looking to get round one off to a good start. But the, the Suns are travelling pretty well. They're, they're going all right. So, it's a big clash up there. It's um, Look, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. The midfields, for me, the you know, they're both star studded. That's where it's going to be won or lost, the midfields. Um, whoever wins that battle is going to win the game. Where, where have you got them finishing, Robbo? Richmond. Uh, I've got them in fifth spot, I think, fifth or sixth. Okay. I think they've got a reasonable draw. I think they've got a pretty, they've got a good balance. Second best draw in the AFL. Yeah, that, that's, of course it's going to help. Yeah. And I, I, I've got, I want to see them tougher. I keep going on about this. Aggressive teams win finals. Mm -hmm. I don't think Richmond are aggressive enough. That's my biggest question. Smith, in my not Smith. Um, Thomas, Port Adelaide, you're a nutcase. You're coming in. Mm -hmm. Right, we need more aggression around the ball. Mm. Soft teams don't win finals. Round one, reassuring or unnerving. There we go. Um, <laughs> enjoy your weekend of footy. Thank you. And there'll be five fresh games to look at Thanks this time next See week. Thanks, boys. See you, Okay, uh, we're going to have our emergency <laughs> session of Supercoach shortly. Tomorrow night, the start of the season, all here on Fox Footy. Uninterrupted, the pre-match, halftime, the post-match. You'll live through it all, the pies and the dockers. We talk about players that don't play a lot of games, but neither did Tom Hayfer or Alan Jean. And, um, you know, he, he had that sort of flair. We, we certainly were all missing him and... Uh, uh, luckily we got those great memories and uh, that was the last thing I sent to was that photo again saying, you know, remember the great time. So uh, we certainly will with him and he'll be part of Port Adelaide's history forever. I'm going to really miss him dearly because he was a fantastic friend of mine and um, a really loyal mate and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just a really sad time for us. But to sit and talk to him, uh, it's just a pure football discussion. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. He touched so many people here and uh, the work he did behind the scenes to, to really help this young group evolve and, and become better people um, will always be remembered and uh, we're certainly going to miss him dearly. Those who remember Dean Bailey with us on AFL 360 during the week, the memorial service at the Adelaide Oval on Saturday morning. To far more trivial matters. Supercoach teams are due. There's panic swatting going on around the country. Many questions answered. We've gone for the experts. Mark Robinson, you know. Jay Clark, you know. Gentlemen, welcome. Jared, how are you? Ready? Yeah, well, I guess in the past couple of weeks, you think your team's all coming together nicely. You've got it sorted. You've seen some of the pre-season form, uh, but it gets to a day like today, 24 hours out from the first bounce, and it's panic stations. Let's be honest, Robbo's raising his hand, <laughs> saying he's got players and, you know, the Lockie Plowman, for example, some real left field runs. So it's, uh, we've got to get it sorted tomorrow morning, Jared. Righto. Gary Ablett has always been the captain of the public servants since the very beginning of fantasy footy. Is Gaz worth it? He remains so, Jared. I think. And we saw a glimpse of it in the first practice game against Essendon. That match winning point is one of the few players in the comp who you can back in the score 150 points every second week, fellas. Maybe Scotty Pendlebury's the other one, but I think Ablett is the cornerstone of your team, making captain almost every week. No-brainer. And I told you this one. It's a no-brainer. Which one? The no-brainer oh. player. 
Dane Beams, I think, has got to be your first pick. He's averaged 31 possessions over the NAB Cup. He's cheaper because he missed so much footy last year, Robbo. Yep. Uh, 500 grand. Is he be in your team? Oh, he is, mate. I, I, I gave him to you, remember? Who are you thinking? I was No, I think Dane Beams. And the other no-brainer is Dale Thomas. You wrote a piece saying, first rule, two rules. Thomas plays, Beams plays. And then you fill in the rest. We're at 341. I mean, that's tremendous value. I think it might be that's a your sl- way, slow actually. build. 341,000. <laughs> 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 oh, I just see he is a must have. Beams and uh, Beams, Ablett, Pendlebury, uh, midfield. But you have to, fellas, you, a lot of our teams are becoming very similar. So you have to get the points of difference or the unique uh, picks. You mentioned Lockie Plowman. Uh, the other day, Rob. Oh, I think Bernie Vince at Melbourne had a sensational mm. pre-season. And a guy at Geelong, Mitch Duncan. There's been a lot of talk mm. about Caddy. But I think Mitch Duncan, he's got a huge tank. He kicks long goals. Caddy and Duncan, I think, are going to become the new nerve centre of the Geelong midfield. OK. Uh, worth a punt here. Now, I'm tortured by Sean Higgins. Yeah. He's always in my team. And he has no luck. And he it's always not a knock on him. No. It's, it's no, but he has no luck. People don't like him because of super coach. It's just so wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> do, do I? Do we bat up with the players who are injury riddle? He's a must have. A bit like Daisy yeah. Thomas. He's had a cursed run, but to see him last week against Carlton, thirty-three touches, just directing traffic off that half uh, back line. He looks settled and he's confident. We spoke to him. So he doesn't think about his foot uh, anymore. I think a lot of their ball movement is going to go through Robert Murphy and Sean Higgins on the back flank. OK, so. OK. Gary Rowan, who I really want Gary Rowan. Is he going to... Yeah. Is that the way? He's cheap. Mm. <laughs> and he should play. It's a spell on you. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> you know, We're friends. Not on telly or anything. He's a must-have. 176. He's never been a big ball winner. No. But he's becoming... Well, he should become an important player for Johnny Longmire when he's fit. Jeremy Laidler named tonight also. Yeah. Uh, 160. So, Laidler... Has that Rowan changed your thinking in. a bit with Laidler? Yeah, he's in. He's definitely in. Yeah. Okay. Left yeah. field, uh, so Duncan and Vince are your, your sort of... I've got one, Ma- Matty Wright. Yep. Matty Wright from Adelaide. And I've been particularly to Jay about this. He's one of those players who played 17 games last year. I think he averaged about 80, 85. He's just sort of coming into being a a confident AFL player. I think he's got the he's got the capacity to do 110s. Down back. We who are my essentials down back? Obviously, the high oh, price you team, pay oh. is McVeigh and Mitchell and maybe Simpson. Yes, yeah, so I really think Kate Simpson is flying under the radar. Has had a great pre-season, uh, a great link man, won't get the tagging attention. David Swallow, now moving into the midfield, I think he's 420k. He's about to explode. Uh, so I think those guys, and either Sammy Mitchell or Jared McVeigh, very hard to split. But uh, I think Jared McVeigh's the man at 570. But then cheaper swallow, suckling. Cheapest chips, bargain basement. Ooh. In the back line, a couple of young boys named uh, tonight uh, Langdon at Collingwood uh, and Langford at Hawthorne and Luke mm. McDonald. Now, the back line's been hard to find. They're the ones in the back line. I think Jay Kennedy Harris, I think, will play for Melbourne. So he's, he's a cheap option at 110, I think. They, they, it's a Cleary for Port Adelaide? Port Adelaide, yeah. I just think Langford's been attending a lot of centre bounces for Hawthorne with Saul out great opportunity and with Marley Williams out I know Tuvi's back Langdon I think is the man at Collingwood how competitive is it in the Herald Sun office how, how com- oh yeah very it's crazy competitive very. Monday mornings unnaturally morning. competitive yeah. <laughs> obsessively competitive we talk about it all year competitive seriously it gets heated it's some and what happened because we've got an open office Someone will say something to someone over here and everyone just everyone's in and then it starts doesn't it it bang, does, bang, bang, bang. It does. Herald Sun footy cards now these yes. start on Saturday and one of the key issues here is that the best and fairest cards are only available in the News Limited papers, in the packs you get with the News Limited papers. What about the 3D one? So I like it. from what is that one? From Saturday. What? What? Look at that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Scotty Thompson, so Ryan Griffin, George. From Nathan Saturday. Five. And the album. And what? the album as Sunday well. as well. Uh, are these for the Waitley kids? They are, they're yours, Jerry. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. I'll be very You'll popular take it. Not bad. Jay, thank you. I'm going to steal all of your IP there and build my team tonight. So good luck against Robbo. Thanks, Jerry. OK, um, next. Sandy Roberts is going to join us on AFL 360. Saturday live on Fox from 4 o'clock. He's been an institution and he's about to become an institution here. The weekend forecast with Sandy next. <laughs> Long 
the introduction. I feel like a shag on a rock again. <laughs> Twice in a week. I've just had to sit here and do nothing. Well, that close. You're like, oh, you. He <laughs> <laughs> threw that. You know, he's four, man. Look at his emotional go. You should have you told me, right? We've only had words once. Yeah, once. Yeah, when? Yeah, yeah. when? Love and love. Are you supposed to put it in there? Why are you so gentle with me in the toilet? Uh, Why are you going to uh, help uh, me now? He wasn't playing. Uh, that's wasn't... all I said to him. Oh, no, he would have been playing. That's exactly playing. what I said. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, that's Thanks what you said to Shane. I'll play you, Shane. <laughs> I've seen you after the show um, two nights ago. People on your back, you started crying. Oh. <laughs> supporter base already hate me, so why <laughs> disappoint them? That could be a decision determined by Justine, because uh, if, if, he, if he plays round one, the whole family have to fly to Perth for his 250th. <laughs> you know, the half-time speech, the, the pre-game speech, you get it? No, it's been annoying me for 20 minutes. Oh, Zellers. I'm going to give me a shirt off. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a shirt off. Hang on, hang on, I'll give you some money. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to make a point. Have you, don't take this wrong, but have you got the strength to push it? It is hot here, and I'm sweating, as you can see. <laughs> It's sweet and grey. It's sweet and grey. I'm okay. looking at his head and I'm going, oh, that's not going back. That's not going back. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of party tales going on at the moment. I'm not sure about oh, yeah. it. Don't you remember your playing days? You remember his playing days? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. You would have Pearls. Pearls. Look at that. Pearls. <laughs> Keep the dude, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I just had to ask the DJ to turn the music down. <laughs> Sorry. Is it what it, most of us think it would be? Yeah. It is. <laughs> what do you think it could be? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a <laughs> imaginative mind. There was never that many involved. Look back at the light of moments of the last week on AFL 360. His arrival has long been foretold, and now he is here making his first appearance on Fox Footy. Sandy Roberts, welcome aboard. Jared, great to be here. And uh, just having watched that promotional clip of this program, am I coming on a footy show or a variety come comedy hour? Yeah, sitting on that side of the desk, you just never know <laughs> what you're doing. Yeah, you never know. No, great to be with you, boys. This is your first time on the station, yeah? Well, management said if you are going to pick a show, Perhaps Come the on. most awarded show is the one to go on. That's a very, so very good So there was only answer. one. No, it's great to have you. So but it starts tomorrow night. This is it. Tomorrow night, of course, uh, we're on air with Collingwood and Fremantle, which is going to be fantastic. No ads. It's going to be all brand new for me. Ad free. <laughs> And High definition. You have to work for your money. Here, I don't know, you? but that's great. That's great. <laughs> Saturdays is the go. Saturday's yeah, going to be a really big day. Put it all together from go to woe. Uh, Saturday afternoon live. It's going to be called cool, Jared, and uh, the, we get a bit of a chance in this first round because being a split round to perhaps uh, get everything right uh, because we won't be going on air until around four o'clock because of the two late games. But then uh, when round two and three get underway, yeah, it's full on. We'll be uh, on air for something like ten hours. Yeah, and the aim is to, at the end of the night, footy fans have learnt on Fox Footy and on our program, Saturday Afternoon Live, everything there is to know about the game at that stage. So we're really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. Do you still love the game? I get excited, yes. Yeah. Uh, and I'm having the chance to call again, <laughs> yep. which is fantastic. In fact, you showed some vision there. There was a shot of um, Gary Ablett Jr. running out of the middle, took a hand pass out of the centre. Yeah, and it was yeah, just yeah. like his father all over again. I mean, it was just fantastic. It was like watching almost Gary Ablett Senior. So almost, almost your f most famous call in footy. You've made a lot. There's a pig on the ground and <laughs> other things. Do you know? Sorry to interrupt you, yeah. but the other day I can't remember where I was, but I was with my wife and we were walking along somewhere. And this chap stopped me. He said, "Excuse me." I said, "Yeah, what is it, mate?" He said. I just want to remind you, I was the bloke that bought the pig into the SCG. <laughs> I said, you are kidding! <laughs> yeah. So uh -huh. we had a good half hour chat. He was a lovely chap. Yeah, but, He's not uh, a pig breeder, by the way. Is your, is your best... People talk to you about is the Gazza. Gazza? Uh, Gazza Senior for those yeah, young enough. Yeah, that was a great... Which is, you're talking about game. the goal out of the centre. It was how Gary Senior took the ball, he ran yeah, around. It was in fairly wet conditions. Yeah. And finished, then he kicked and finished up virtually on his knees and put his hands up like that. And it's one of those things where you actually take a little bit of a punt. Uh, I think I finished up by saying, what more can you say? And the ball was still in the air yeah. going through. But 
Yeah, was, Only the true pros get away with us. Did people, I presume people still in the street will shout out to you, hey, what more can yeah. you say? <laughs> or, or as I've discovered around here, oh, my hat. <laughs> yes. what, about, like oh, my what about Leanne Dick? <laughs> oh, I haven't mentioned her. <laughs> and we're not going to mention her. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is a football show. <laughs> the weekend forecast, uh, Sandy. Actually, she is a, a very good friend <laughs> and she's been very good about it for a number of years. You can lead <laughs> us off here. What is your sure thing for the weekend? Well, I think it's a sure thing. I've, I've put it down. We're going to have to see. But I think Ballantyne and Waters, Walters might just uh, have a little bit of a say in carving up uh, the Magpie defence. Uh, they've uh, certainly got some points to prove after the end of last year. So that is my sure thing. What are you thinking? Walters a star. I'm just thinking Sydney. I, I couldn't think of one, Jerry, so I said Sydney. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Si well, Sydney. No, well, Sydney will win. win. And have you any thoughts on Ryan O'Keefe? Um, I reckon they're arresting him. I don't think there's anything wrong. I think it's a long season. I think they're going to play preliminary final weekend. You're 33, 34, so you know, have a rest. That's all. Br Bridge aggro for me. I think Shane Mumford will just bring our first little glimpse of aggravation between That's the all. Giants and the Swans. That's a good point. That'd be good. Uh, most at stake? Most at stake, I think, is the game itself. Mm -hmm. Having seen the way the game has been played in recent times, uh, I'm a little concerned, and I just hope that it's not going to be this rolling mass that sort of has developed. And it's up to the coaches, obviously, to try and ensure that the game does stay very, very watchable. So I'm concerned about that. Carlton. Yeah, fair enough. Most at stake, Carlton. Crowd numbers yeah. in light of what happened with the NRL. Yep. I think everyone's on Good alert. Point. Doomsday, Sandy. Doomsday. What did I say Doomsday was? Yeah, um, man, tiger. Tiger. Are we all three? Oh, 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 tigers. Oh, tigers. tigers. Uh, We've all gone The tigers. round one curse. Yes. But they've only won once, I think, in the last five years. Right. Interestingly enough, that was that last, last year. year yeah. The Blue Boys. Yeah. And you've gone Tigers? Oh, I've gone Tigers losing on the road. I love it when the Tigers yeah. fans get upset. <laughs> oh, they can't be microwaving enough to run one. <laughs> what uh, have you done? Oh, Jack kicks 10 from the wing. And we can't speak to him. And then he doesn't do the glorious interview at the end. He'll speak That's to you. Mate. Mate. Well, me. we certainly hope so. You don't, hope so. You don't turn your back on legends. No. Uh, Sandy. You're a kind man. <laughs> good luck. It's great to have you as part of it all. It's great to be here, Jared. We'll Thank you. Tomorrow Thanks, night. Robbo. Well done, Thank Sandy. Thank you, Robbo. Righto, Robbo. Enjoy the return to footy. Is this at the end that's of the show? It. That's oh. it. That's all. Do you want more? <laughs> well, I didn't know. I, I don't think, know anything, mate. I think that's <laughs> more than enough. Robbo, on Monday, Paul Roos and Mark Thompson to give us their impressions of how I, these I first four Thank rounds you. go. Enjoy your weekend of footy here on Fox. <laughs>